photography takes an instant out of time, capturing life by holding it still. Glebo Alexanderov here for CreativeShrimp.com and welcome to another very cool tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to approach lighting and rendering as if you're taking a photo, as if you're a photographer. So let's jump straight into the tutorial. And here you can see the result and I think that looks awesome. All those bottles, all that stuff, it transmits reflective refract light in very complex way. And the only thing you control in those type of scenes is just your camera. And make sure to check the open lighting project of creativeshrimp.com. You and a bit of me will change the way we talk about lighting forever. I guarantee it. So let's move on to tutorial. Uh, the step one is to build a set. You know, to have a very complex lighting, we first need to, to have a very complex scene at our disposal. So go ahead and create a complex stack of crap. And in case of my scene, I have chosen those bottles because I know that the glass material and the subtle interactions between those bottles in terms of lighting will produce a very interesting picture. And maybe it's also because I read uh, Hunter Thompson Gonzo Journalist articles and I wanted to make something similar. So go ahead and add a simple light source. We already have a very complex geometry and the equation is here. One simple light source plus many different bottles equals amazingly complex lighting. That's very, very scientific. So create an uh, area light and the angle and position of the light source doesn't matter very much because we are going to navigate and search for the best shot with our camera. And that's the whole point of the tutorial. Uh, how can you create a scene not preceded by a draft or a concept art? How can you create the awesome image just pretending that you work, you behave as a photographer? So, after you created the very simple light source, let's move on to point number three. And that's boring stuff. Optimize render settings and create a camera. Let's first start with creating a camera. And come on, anybody can create it. Just don't forget to press uh, Ctrl and NumPod 0 to make it an active camera. Alright, and after you do it, I recommend you to constrain the visible area just to what camera sees. So make sure to crank up the alpha setting in the Passport 2 tab. And our next step is to constrain the render region to this area by pressing Shift B and dragging the rectangle. In other words, we make sure that the camera isn't rendering anything that we don't need it to render. And also, it's quite advisable to limit the light bounces to 2 or maybe to 1. Uh, it depends on the scene you're creating. And we do it because uh, very soon we'll need all the viewport speed we can get. Right, and just before moving on to the actual uh, navigation in the scene, I'm gonna turn on the film emulation. And we need to emulate this analog film response to lighting, because we are going to pretend that we are operating a real camera. You know, it's a simulation of photography. Mm -hmm. So let's just select a film in this tab, and then I'm gonna tweak the exposure and the gamma settings till everything looks more awesome than it was. And also I'm gonna tweak the curves uh, to wash out the blacks a bit. And also maybe I will play with some channels to get those Instagram look. And if you use Instagram, just remember the Nashville filter, something along these lines. And also you can scrub through the looks using control and mouse wheel, but I won't do it for now. And ta -da 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 pretend that you're a photographer. That's the final step of this tutorial and that's the most important step so grab your virtual camera and let's see how can you navigate efficiently in the Blender viewport. And here you can see how I tweak uh, the depth of field setting just to make image more pretty. Because everything looks cooler with the bokeh. And then I'm doing two things. I'm selecting a camera by right clicking on the viewport border. And I'm placing 3D cursor on the bottle and selecting 3D cursor in the pivot mode. After that, you can press R and Z to pivot the camera around the selection. And that's super handy. Also, you can press R two times to orbit around the selection in the free form mode, just like you have a trackball or something like that. And that's already very useful navigational shortcuts. And also, you can press G to pan camera. And press G and Z two times to dolly camera. And that's a lot of hotkeys, but they will help you to navigate like a pro. 
And here you can see the sped up footage of me navigating through this scene and it's very fluid process. You could rotate tilt camera using hotkeys only. Alright, so using these tips navigate through the scene and search for the best shot and I guarantee you will be amazed of how many great shots you will get this way. And that's the shot that I've got. And thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it will be helpful to you. And by the way, here's another shot. And feel free to share this insanity. It will mean a lot to me. And you can help me to spread the word about Open Lighting Project by retweeting this tweet. So just click it and retweet it. Thanks so much.